Welcome to How's Your E-Presence on Business Radio X. How's Your E-Presence is a show designed to help business people or companies understand how to implement social media better. We're all in business to make money. Why not use social media to help increase those revenues? This is a show managed by ePresence, and ePresence manages social media for organizations that understand that business is done more effectively by the individual profile on social media. I'm Mark Galvin. I'm coming to you live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio inside the Sinesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel. And we are thrilled to be with you today. You guys know what this show is all about. We talk about professional social media. How can you do a little better job on social media as a business? Because we know people do business with people. People interact online with other people. Why not harness the online social media profile of individuals to do that a little better? You know, there's so many things that happen on social media. I get questions all the time. Can you sell on social media? Can I find brand new clients on social media? We'll try to answer some of those questions today. Can you use social media to grow your business? I was in an SEO meeting just yesterday with a local business that where we found out that they were probably not harnessing their website as well enough to do some of that work. You can definitely use social media to help you achieve your goals. Here on ePresence, we'd like to share some time uh, with a guest and uh, talk a little bit about social media from our social media research team about things that are going on in the social media world. If you've got a question about social media that you would like for me to answer, you're welcome to hit me online. You can hit me on hit me live at ePresenceMG. That's ePresenceM for Mark. G for Galvin, right on Twitter. I got it right in front of me. I got some great stuff that's appearing here on uh, local company Chick-fil-A right here. So you you can send me a note. If you send me something after uh, after the show's over, because a lot of you are going to listen to this as a recorded show, then I'll respond to that, uh, that question either directly or on a future show. So I always bring a guest in. And this month, I have got an outstanding guest. As a matter of fact, I probably know this guy better than I should admit. And, <laughs> and I he don't know is, how he want to admit that. <laughs> <laughs> My guest today is Michael Erler. He is the owner, operator, brand poobah of Erler Coaching and Consulting. Michael, welcome. Thank you, Mark. And actually, I know you well as well. <laughs> <laughs> Did, so I don't know if that was grammatically correct. I, I think that that's good. I can't. What's okay? I can't spell your name, right? I know most people can't. Right, because it's Erler. It's so, Erler. Yeah, so I'm going to spell it E R L E R. Is that right? No, it's E H R L E R. As a matter of fact, I got married four months ago, and I told Leslie, "I'm like Leslie, you're going to get tired of spelling Erler." Yeah, because I, I I have to admit, I don't think I've told you this. Maybe I have. Our first meeting, I'm driving along, and I, I'm trying to figure out who the heck is it I'm about to meet with. And I go, I type in Erler, and I kept finding E-R-L-E-R. I couldn't track you down. I thought, I don't know who this guy is. I'm spelling his name wrong. Am I going to the right meeting? Well, you hired me as your coach, so I must have <laughs> impressed you. <laughs> I was impressed by your name. I think is that you, it? I think you misspell your name, quite frankly. Have you thought ever thought about that? Maybe you're misspelling it. Maybe I should have an easy name like Galvin. Well, yeah, I've, I don't know about that either because here in Atlanta, I get Glavin a lot. Have you heard there's a pitcher that used to pitch for Atlanta? Yeah, called, Glavin. Yeah, yeah, I get that a bunch. All right, enough about me. Let's talk about you. Okay. I like the white hot spotlight on you. So you've been a coach, and, and uh, you are a coach now, but you have spent 25 years in the corporate sector and 15 years leading your own coach. I didn't, quite frankly, didn't know you were this old. Tell me, give me a little bit, what had prepared you to do this job? Actually, I love that question because, um, and I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. When I was 16 years old, you're not getting goosebumps looking at uh, at, at Michael over here. That Mike, the uh, now you're the such radio a good owner. looking guy. Oh, uh, <laughs> let's not do that. <laughs> Although I could say you have a face for radio. Uh, yeah, I certainly do. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's be serious. Actually, I started my first business at 16. I was a sophomore in high school. Ed Miller was. 18 I was 16 and we met actually you wouldn't know it today but I ran cross country in high school wow I I, I did I I'm not <laughs> surprised <laughs> like I backtracked so on we seal coated people's driveways within a couple weeks I hated getting my fingernails dirty and those kinds of things so I actually went out and did the selling and Ed ended up doing the production so even in high school 
in the 70s, so I am dating myself, uh, we could make a few hundred dollars a day, which wow. was really cool, by the way. So you started early. You started understood early. The, the component of being an entrepreneur from a very young age. Absolutely. And if you were to ask me what it takes to be successful in business, I would say sales. So you've told me something I think is always very important to remember. How much of my time should I spend in sales? I think you should be in front of clients or what I call future clients 80% of the time. See, and that's an important thing to keep in mind for everybody. everybody. 80% of the time, 80%. you need to be in that business development mode, new future client mode, right? So I tell people, you know, if I'm in clients, in front of clients, excuse me, six hours a day, either in front of current clients or future clients, my business is very successful. That's awesome. That is awesome, and I think that's fantastic advice. So uh, you're a graduate of a very of a of a college that's getting a lot of press as of the last two days. What college was that? You're, you're frowning. You don't even know what I'm talking about. This I is don't. Good. Yeah, I don't. So, uh, I'm going to remind you. Where did you graduate? Where did you get your undergrad from? University of Dayton. Don't you know that that's where the four in that plays into? Now I did know that. Yeah, the last two nights they've I'm been in Dayton. I'm thinking academically because it's such a great school. Well, it is a great academic school, and and uh, as a matter of fact, my son wanted that was his number one school that he wanted to go to. Got in, everything was good until I saw the price tag. He went to another college. So I am impressed that you were able to afford that. And then you went on and you got an MBA from Thomas More University. Where's Thomas? Thomas More College. It's Th actually in Crestview Hills, Kentucky. Crestview Hills, Kentucky. Is I'm there sure a, you've heard of that. I, I know that place well. It's a thriving metropolis and they have lots of green valleys and and, and horses. Something like that. <laughs> Actually, it's about 20 minutes from downtown Cincinnati. Okay. Oh, so it's just that it's south of just south of Cincinnati then, Correct. in that Kentucky side. Well, that's awesome. Well, I'm glad you're here. Thank, Thank you, you for joining me. Thank uh, you, Mark. You you always bring such uh, a great a great amount of of wisdom and uh, direction to any conversation. And I wanted you to come on because there's so much that we can talk about. And the struggle is this show's only 30 minutes. Right. So we're going to try to be as targeted as possible. So are you saying you want me back a number of times? Is that what you're saying? Well, you know, the fee to show up here, <laughs> I just don't know if you can afford it. Did I tell you I did a radio <laughs> show in Dayton, Ohio? You have told me that. It was so much fun. Yeah, radio is fun. And as for anybody listening, I'm telling you what, you should uh, you should certainly call up Business Radio X here in Gwinnett and see if you can get your own show, because this is a lot of fun. Well, let's talk about social media. There's some cool okay. things that have happened recently in social media that are important to the business world and for a lot of folks to, to, to think about. The first one is this. The NBA has done a great job of leveraging social media. So this is the National Basketball Association. Probably worth saying that since this is not a sports show. The NBA has always leveraged social media well. They're probably the most relevant, uh, forward-thinking group that there is. But they've got a problem. When you walk into a, a, um, a locker room after an NBA show – Here's or NBA game. Here's what ha used to happen. You used to walk in and you could talk to the player, say you're a journalist. It is a show, isn't it? That's right. It is, absolutely. <laughs> but you could walk into the locker room at the end of a game and you can interact with the players and they're talking to you and maybe you know, telling somebody beside them that they had a good game. Well, that doesn't happen anymore. When you walk in the locker room, they're all on their device. They're all on their phone. They are all trying to figure out that social media world and leverage it. They're reading what pundits have to say. They're trying to figure out memes. I'm still trying to figure out memes, frankly. They're trying to decipher emojis. What do those emojis really mean? And the problem is, is they spend hours and hours a day looking at their feed, getting screamed at by strangers. And it's starting to really push them. It's really making them feel um, um, isolated and lonely. And I've heard years over years that NBA players are, are a lonely lot because it's difficult to get true friends when you're that famous and that wealthy. And in fact, the NBA, NBA commissioner, uh, Adam Silver, recently said um, that we live in a bit, excuse me, we live a bit in the age of anxiety. And he thinks Social media is a, is a product or is creating this anxiety with their players. Here's what's important to know, and this is why it's, it's worthwhile bringing up here, is that social media can complement our lives, but it shouldn't control our lives. Exactly. Right? If you're spending hours and hours of day trying to get your personal value from social media, that's a problem. You should use it to complement your business, without a doubt, stay in touch with clients, but you shouldn't let it consume your entire day. 
the NBA is struggling with this because their players are getting feeling more and more isolated, and it is a problem. And I think we all need to learn this, that social media is a great way to stay in touch with people, but it doesn't replace the face-to-face. It doesn't replace real relationships. Use it to complement relationships, not dominate relationships. And that sounds like a given, but it's very worthwhile to mention. When I saw this thing about the NBA, I thought that was fascinating and something worth mentioning, especially on this show, because we talk about how important social media is. What are your thoughts on that? Anything, uh, you got a, you have a, you have a favorite NBA team? <clears throat> I don't. So when, can I say that? I don't. You can absolutely say that. Well, you know, the, the Atlanta Hawks are, not necessarily having a great season, so the local team's not the. Not I do love that. college basketball. Well, this time of year is a great time because of March Madness. So I absolutely agree with that. And hey, they started the first four games. Well, know, first right? four teams right out I of think that in team. It was the first four games, yeah, <laughs> in Dayton. That's right. All right, here's something else that's come up. The new another topic. So you to, ask me a question and then you keep talking. Oh, do you have an answer for that? I do, Mr. Erler. <laughs> <laughs> Spelling your name wrong, Mr. Erler. Mark. Mark. Actually, the word I liked was compliment. Compliment. So it should compliment anything and everything that we do, right? Like, for example, when I was thinking about if you really need to be in front of your client six hours a day, that doesn't leave time to be on social media all day. So, Oh, very good point. To me, social media, if it's LinkedIn for businesses or Facebook for business or whatever, it truly should complement what you're doing and not replace what you're doing. And it can help you be more successful, but it should never be the primary means of how you stay in touch with people and how you build relationships. As I pull up my phone here and work on a social media post. So here's the next topic. You ready to move on? Yes, sir. Because we don't, you know, we only got 15 we, minutes of time. Yeah. The next one, next thing I think is really interesting is this, is that, um, is that insurance companies are watching what you're posting on social media and they may raise your rates based on that. Really? Yeah. So it's, this is this is fascinating. So the don't they raise our rates for anything? Yeah, you know, <laughs> without a doubt, they're always looking for a reason with, for another way that they can raise our insurance rates. In this case, imagine this: What if I uh, go out and I like to climb rocks? You know, I do rock climbing. I, I go out and climb that sheer face of a rock that's a, a you know a couple thousand feet tall. Maybe I like to ride motorcycles. Uh, without a helmet and I like to talk about that or um, let's say I talk about how I drive recklessly all the time well that's a bit of a problem and so what happens now is that insurance companies are picking up on this and realizing gosh you know what we can find people that are at risk of creating a creating risk for us uh, an insurance company by watching their social media hello is it a political statement if I say that they should use objective information to determine our rates well no, I, I in this case i don't think it's political at all i think what we're looking at is we do share a lot of information on social media so you can um why don't you show pictures of you walking down the sidewalk <laughs> <laughs> right i mean it, it comes down to to all of what you share everybody can see and and I think and here and this has gotten so bad that New York, the state of New York, has created guidelines for these insurance companies on how they can write their algorithms to pick up this data. So it all comes back to this: you got to watch what you're sharing on social media. And and for the record, it doesn't go away. If you post it and you go, oh, I don't like that, it's too late. It's already on the servers, and it can already be picked up by potentially by your insurance. Even company. if you delete it. Even if you delete it, it's already on the server. So Snapchat is one of those that young people think, oh, it goes away. You know, all the posts expire. They don't expire. If you read the fine print with Snapchat, they tell you that anytime you put something on Snapchat that they can use it for marketing in the future. So it doesn't go away. It is there on the server. Pretty fascinating stuff. So here's the next thing. Okay. Snapchat wants to make more money. Did you know that? Don't we all want to make more money? (laughs) Exactly. This is a show about trying to make more money. Well, Snapchat is launching a new in-app gaming platform next month where now you can go on to Snapchat and you can start playing games on it because did you know that games, video games in general, make three times as much money as the uh, cinemas do, as movie theaters make? Three times as much money. 
there's a lot of cash to be made there. They're trying to figure that out more and create more revenue by putting those games right in the middle of Snapchat. Now, here's what's so cool. So, Michael, I know you're on Snapchat all the time. So when you're on Snapchat the next time, you can grab your face and you can put it on a character in one of the games. So it literally has your face and your face is, is carrying out whatever task it is in the game. That sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it? I would think, <clears throat> pardon me, I would think a few people I know would want to, like, shoot at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, you know, I don't, I don't know that there's that component. Because, you know, you and I can play each other on a game right. wherever we are in the world. I don't know that that's happening in Snapchat. It might be. And if that is the case, let's you like and I figure that out. So I can shoot at you. Maybe darts. Darts would be good. Yeah, I darts. agree. So... Well, where are we on time? We are perfect timing. It's about quarter after. I'm going to shift over, and let's talk about you, my friend. Okay. I I know that you work with a lot of clients, and, and you spend, and I know you spend a lot of time on the road going out to meet with them and spending weeks at a time with a client. There are, there are so many ways that social media can make or help people achieve their own mission and achieve their revenue goal. How can a business owner overcome the challenges each of them face managing social media better? How can they, let me rephrase that. I said that wrong. How can business owners manage social media more effectively? What are some of those systems or some of those ways that you tell them to do that? Well, I am on the road because I do have clients out of state, but also of course take care of clients here in Atlanta. But, um, the fact of the matter is, like, one of my clients, for example, actually does videos. Oh, wow. And he's a funny guy. Yep. And he does – it's a high-tech company, so he educates people a lot on, like, even the IT security side. So he uses that, of course, to educate his current client base as well as educate what I would call the future client base. That's brilliant. So it's actually working well with this marketing person to – in fact, Mark, I wanted to introduce him to you, but um, he wanted to hire a full-time person. The great thing about you and your business is that you can work with people like me part-time. Right. Oh, absolutely. So there's something I'd like to ask you about is these that videos. A commercial? Yeah, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Um, how does he make his videos? Does he have a full studio that sets up, where he has somebody come in to to film those? How does he put those together? He actually just does it in his office. So. And I think that that's a really interesting point. So he's not spending a ton of money to put these videos together. He probably made a small investment on some some equipment, and he just does it himself. Yes. See, and I think that's brilliant. It is easier because there's a bit of uh, – there's some anxiety, I think, is a good way to describe it. For a lot of business people, when you talk about video, they go, oh, my goodness, i got to hire someone. they got to bring them in. Then i got to do some major production. And then there's all that post-production cost. If you're able to just get some equipment, do it in the office yourself, you drive that cost down. Plus, as soon as you get an idea, you can throw, you can stand up and just do the video and push it out on social media. So I think that that's a really good and effective means, uh, ways to, to manage that. Very smart. So one of the challenges that I think that I, I run into frequently is that people are, they're, they're always looking for the easier way to make a dollar. Right. right, and I think that's. I think we all want that. If there's a more efficient way to bring in revenue, we would all like to know about that. And and there was some misconception that social media could be that that angle. Do you feel like social media can replace some of those traditional business marketing means, like face to face communications and and business development? Well, I see marketing as driving people towards the sales transaction. Right. So if you use social media or utilize social media to drive people to that face-to-face meeting, then social media can be very effective. So this isn't a a question of either or, it's and and both. So you you still need to do both. Can, do you feel like one can make the other more potent? Well, I think I'll just state it this way and um, hopefully I make myself clear, but to me, Social media drives people to that face-to-face transaction like I just talked about. So to me, if you are, you still have to meet and understand the client and their needs. And right, absolutely. That can't be done through social media. That has to be done face-to-face or even over the phone in extreme cases. But to me, the social media should, should accentuate that. Absolutely. Yeah, this is... Um 
There's an interesting stat. 93% of buying decisions are influenced by social media. It's one of those things that uh, I think we all need to Even be aware of. Even business to business? Yeah. It actually, it, it's, it may not be as high as 93%, but that is all purchases is, is that number. I bet it is a, a bit smaller would be my guess. But that said, what is interesting about this is that it's the word influence. So if I, if you and I met each other right. and we did not, we were not doing business with each other at all, we're connected online and you see the content that I'm sharing on your social media feed, you are very likely to see me in a positive light and turn around and call me and say, hey, you know what, let's do business together. Because you, you, know, you may not have been sold when we first met, but we still had that individual personal contact and then we connect with each other. So I purposefully would reach out to you and say, let's connect on, on LinkedIn then you see my content, you see what I'm sharing, and my mission, as everyone's mission should be, is to share content that you're gonna find interesting. It's not about me, I'm not selling. I may say I have a product that satisfies a need, that's fine, and but I would do that sparingly. The other times I would share content that my audience would want to consume. So you know, if I were, as an example, we'll, at, on ePresence, we're constantly sharing things that can help people out on social media. How can you, uh, how can you leverage the LinkedIn app to connect to more people when you're at events? Well, anybody wants to have that information if they travel or they're, in, they're meeting people. So we're trying to help with folks with that information. Well, here's what's great. They are going to end up seeing that we have our finger on the pulse. Well, you know, if I sell kitchen cabinets, there's all these components to what, what you need to think about when I'm, when I'm selling kitchen cabinets and I stay in front of you as a potential customer, you're eventually gonna go, yeah, you know what, I should reach out to them because I, I definitely need to know more about that because I may, I, I'm now interested in kitchen cabinets. That's what social media does so effectively that w I think we lose, face, lose, lose, um, lose focus on. However, have, have you heard of LinkedIn Navigator? It's a back in, it's a back of the, it's a back-end system that is okay. all about, it's almost like a CRM okay. that's, that sits on top of LinkedIn. And if you're focused on developing clients, you can certainly take, um, take LinkedIn Navigator to build new relationships that hopefully you can get in front of those folks. But you're still going to need to get in front of them. Right. Um, depending on your product, and most of the time, most of the folks that we talk to are looking at products that they need to get in front of the client. They need to make sure that they have a chance to see them face to face. There are certainly products out there that you can push on social media that are quick click and, and a quick buy, right? Hey, there's a pair of shoes I'd like to buy them. Click, I'm going to buy them. So yes, that's one part of social media that you can just develop new clients. But if you have a longer term sell, you've got to know you still got to get in front of people. Does that make any sense at all? It does make sense. So you are, um, one of the things that you've done is you work with so many folks. I think there is uh, something, I've just got to ask you this. This is uh, not necessarily focused on social media. What are the traits that you've seen that most successful business people have? Confidence, decisiveness. People that are wishy-washy don't do well. Hmm. Oh, I, I can see I'm that. working with a client and he takes forever to make a decision. And so I'm trying to help him to figure out how to be more decisive and bring him more confidence in making those decisions. So I partner with my clients to help them to be more decisive and more confident in employee development, sales, marketing, leadership. So what keeps people from being decisive? Um, Uncertainty, obviously. Sure. Um, never had made that type of decision before. There's a large financial consequence if they don't do oh, well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I can see that. Um, you know, the hiring decisions. Um, and you help with that. You you will help folks identify, particularly salespeople, the right salesperson to bring into an organization, if I remember <coughs> right. Yeah, and, and I'll actually interview them. And um, one of the the tricks that I do, if I can say that, is actually to interview people for a couple hours. And I know what, instinctively know what questions to ask. Interestingly enough, in my opinion, people will tell you the truth after 90 minutes. Oh, because they're, they're ready to go. They're putting their best foot forward. <laughs> I'm out yeah, here. Stay, stay. <laughs> no. But no, people for the first 90 minutes or so put their best foot forward and then they start to relax. So I get them to relax. I usually... Um, 
bring them somewhere where we could have dinner or lunch or coffee and sure. just have a conversation and I'm making observations. I'm looking for little things that mean significant things. Oh, is that interesting? So there's a um, uh, there's a CEO, and I think this is the CEO of Citibank did this. So don't if this is wrong, uh, don't quote me, uh, don't blame it on the CEO of Citibank. But he would bring in a high level executive that was inter- interviewing for a job, and he would meet them for breakfast, and they'd always go to the same restaurant, and he would have a deal with the server where the server would screw up the order multiple times, and he would watch the applicant's reaction and if the applicant didn't handle it well in fact got mad or angry or would lash out at the server he wouldn't hire him i thought that was fascinating one thing i did i've done this for about 15 years interviewing and hiring for my clients and what i'm looking for is the good fit so i'm i work with a lot of high-tech companies sure so i look for people that are motivated and coachable and have a good attitude and would be a great team player and you know the intangibles right right and so a lot of times i would end up being late for 10 minutes and i love to be on time yeah i do know that and so i would show up late and uh, i'd see how they react one time i text this um applicant i said hey i'm going to be 20 minutes late because um you know as a father i had to take care of my daughter for a minute and um, so I needed, it was on a Saturday morning, and she yelled at me. Oh, you're kidding. No, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I sent you a text. And she's like, well, I didn't get the text. And, and I did send it to her. And right. Interestingly enough, I told her, I'm like, this is the worst start of an interview that I've ever had in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, boy. The interesting thing is, and I make recommendations to my clients unless they just totally miss the mark. And the few times that my clients have hired people, of course, that I suggested that they not, ended up not doing well. Wow. Is this one of them? Did they hire her? They, this, this was a physician. Okay. And he hired her. All right. All right. Interestingly enough, she only lasted a couple months. Oh, wow. Well, Actually, it was good for me. Sure. You got more work. I got more work. <laughs> and it gave me even more credibility. Yeah. I would tell you what. That is, uh, it is, it is difficult to hire. Because on paper, people can look like they're terrific. And, well, like but, you have my resume in front of you, and right. I look great on a resume. Sure. You do look great. <laughs> what, uh, wait a minute. And, 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 and you are great, right? Thank it's, you. It, it, they, but no, they go like hand people, hand. like it's interesting, the sales and marketing people lie the most on a resume. Well, true. Absolutely. And, and maybe lie is a strong word, but exaggerate. Right. Well, I, that's also part of, that can be part of sales. I shouldn't say should be or is. Well, it can I understand be. people want to put yeah. their best foot forward. One time I was, and I follow up with reference checks. You can, I look for consistency between the apl- application, the resume, the interview. I ask my clients not to talk about the interview that they've had until I've done my interview. Uh-huh. And if I see consistency across the board, then then it then it makes more sense to look at hiring that person. Interesting. And when I do the reference checks, you find out more from the reference checks than right. you do from the app. So when you are working on a reference check and you call someone, you say, "Hey, I'm I'm calling looking for a reference on Mark Galvin," and they refuse to call you back, is that a sign? No, because sometimes people are busy. Okay, but I take I'm it persistent. as a sign. By the way, I'm persistent. I take that as a sign. Hmm. It says on my resume I've taught college for the last 35 years right, or so, yep. and part-time, never full-time. And one of my students wanted me to be a reference check, and I'm like, please don't ask me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and she still did. And I would just, I would tell, like, you know, this is someone, um, I'm not fully comfortable being a reference check for somebody. Hmm. Well, that's honest. That's good. Yeah, I have a feeling that if someone... And I kept telling her, Do please find somebody else. Yeah, well, that was a mistake for her to continue to push that. My feeling is if I if you called me and you were asking for a reference on someone that I had a high opinion of, I'm going to call you back because I want you to know they're a good person, that they are worth hiring. If it's someone I'm not so interested in endorsing, I may not be in such a hurry to call. I would say 95% of the 
reference checks are good, but it's interesting the five percent. Sure, oh, well, we are well. It, we're at almost. We're out of time. Actually, okay. I would love to hear more about that. <laughs> quite frankly, uh, well, I am thrilled that you were able to join me on Thank the show you. today, Michael. Thank it's you. this is. Uh, there are so many things that you and I talk about on a daily basis, frequently on a daily basis, that uh, where you give me good enlightenment. And it's good to be able to bounce things off of you. And uh, and that is, especially on a small business side, that's why I think it's worthwhile having a coach. Because if you are, you can we can work in a vacuum, and it's difficult to bounce stuff off of uh, professionals who can who have your own personal interest in mind, your success of your company, the success of you. Uh, it is good to have someone who can fulfill though that need and that's what and I know you do so much more than that but that's my number one thing I love to be able to have someone that I can bounce that type of info off of so well, I appreciate that how can people find you what's your website actually um, I'm having my website built okay but look find me on LinkedIn at this point actually I worked with you and your team. Right. They were phenomenal, by the way. Thank you. I love that. Robin was great. Yeah, she does a she good job. Great. So for all of you who don't know this, Robin is our, our senior e-publicist, and she does uh, most of the work when it comes to cleaning up profiles. And so if you go online and look for Michael Erler, so that's M-I-C-H-A-E-L, Erler, E-H-R-L-E-R, based in Atlanta, you will find him on LinkedIn. His handle on Twitter, or excuse me, on um on LinkedIn is Michael Dash Erler. And so for those of you who are familiar with LinkedIn will understand how to track him down. Michael Dash Erler. Well, Michael, thank you for coming. Oh, today. thank you, Mark. It's I been appreciate a it. Yeah, I love spending time with you. And when you're looking for ePresence, go on the web and just search for ePresence. You can find us, find our website quickly. Speaking of websites, ours is up and running. However, I'm redoing the website, so we're about to launch a brand Isn't new one. Isn't everybody redoing their yeah, website? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. You should always be working on your website. Or you can find us on Facebook or LinkedIn or anywhere, just simply looking up, looking for ePresence M-E, ePresence, E-P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E-M-E on all of those social media. That's our that's our handle everywhere. We're always sharing thoughts and tips about how you can better harness your social media. Also, you can hit our website at epresence.me. That's epresence.me because it's all about you. Thanks again for joining us here on How's Your Epresence. We broadcast live on the third Thursday of each month at 3 o'clock Eastern or just remember the third Thursday at 3. You can catch any of our shows 24-7 by going to businessradiox.com, selecting the Gwinnett Studio, and then selecting the How's Your E-Presence show logo. You can also find How's Your E-Presence on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Spotify, you name it. We are out there. Just go search for us on any of those podcast apps, and you can listen to us 24-7. Also, remember this, that uh, you can... You, you've got to make sure you remember these Business and Radio X people. They do. They have so many great shows. You should check all of those out and uh, check out Mike Salmon's show and his radio station here, Gwinnett Business Radio X. They're just terrific. For more about ePresence, again, you can find us at ePresence.me. That's ePresence.me because it's all about you. Until next time, and for my guest, Michael Erler, I'm Mark Galvin. This has been How's Your ePresence on Business Radio X. Business Radio X.